decline in high school seniors SAT tests, particularly during the peak of atmospheric testing in, in 1963. I believe the scores dropped overall 12 percent. Yes, and never recovered. And I came across some information from, um, this was actually published in the Atlantic in September of 2011, that the class of 2011's SAT scores also dropped significantly. In fact, they had fallen to their lowest levels in nearly 40 years. That's the end of bomb testing. And um, one of the scientists I worked with uh, throughout this, uh, well, so I started working with him in 2000, is Dr. Ernest Sternglass, who is um, one of the finest human beings that I know, a uh, wonderful, wonderful man who stood up to the nuclear industry. He was working for General Electric, and he supported nuclear power when they were developing it. But he's not only a physicist, but he's an engineer. And he finally realized what a scam nuclear power was. And while he was working at GE, he started going to Washington, D.C. because his wife made him or she went with him. And she said, you have to do this for the children of America. And he started testifying in Congress against nuclear power. And uh, then he was also very, very strongly opposed to nuclear bomb testing. And... Uh, wrote many, many articles that, that were published all over the United States and actually all over the world opposing nuclear bomb tests because he said the radioactive fallout is killing our children and causing cancer. Well, President John F. Kennedy uh, is the only president who has been concerned about the children of America and the dangers of radiation exposure. And one of his advisors gave him a paper that Sternglass had written, and Sternglass convinced Kennedy that, or helped to convince him uh, to, uh, to get the partial test ban treaty passed in 1963. And Sternglass actually testified in the Senate for President Kennedy, who was desperate to get the partial test ban treaty uh, ratified by the Senate, and then he could sign it into law. And it, it worked. It worked. Uh, also, the surrounding the White House with baby buggies pushed by uh, little old ladies' grandmothers in tennis shoes also was a very, very strong demonstration, very high profile, that also helped uh, to convince the public and also the government agencies promoting uh, bomb testing and, and um, nuclear power to end the bomb tests. And the nuclear industry was extremely upset. They would have uh, assassinated uh, Sternglass if they could have, but he was too high profile. And I really believe that I would have been assassinated by now if I hadn't been so profile, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea I was doing who I was, you know, bucking or who I was challenging. But I was just desperate to stop all this nuclear nightmare and the nuclear power plants in Japan. So um, it's uh, very dangerous uh, if you're doing it all by yourself. There's a tremendous risk of retaliation. But when we all come together, there's many more of us, and that is more frightening uh, for these uh, this dark energy to face a nation of people opposing their policies. There are very few of them, actually. And we can actually stop this. I have absolutely no doubt at all if more and more people and in, in, come together in their communities, in their states and counties, and in countries eventually. So if we just keep working and, and putting this information out and educating each other, it sooner or later it, it becomes obvious to them that they just simply have to stop. And uh, followed by Kennedy stopping the bomb testing by open-air testing by the U.S., the Soviet Union, and Britain, uh, that helped to 
reduce the uh, the kill off of the fish in the ocean. And Stern Glass uh, studied and published a paper. No, he didn't publish it. I want to publish it as a, um, a historic paper because he was able to show that the fishing catch in the Pacific dropped sixty five percent in the North Pacific from during the bomb tests there, and it never did recover because the uh, nuclear power plants and the the further tests by um, Asian countries and and uh, yeah, it was the Asian countries. They kept testing. The French did too, and um, and so the fishing catch in the Pacific never recovered. The official story is that it was overfishing, but when he did, when he checked the data on the number of fishermen and the fishing catch, it was not overfishing uh, by the fishermen. It was the fishermen catching fewer and fewer fish because they were dying uh, from the the fallout falling into the oceans, and that's certainly happening to the Pacific, multiplied by many times because the radiation released from Fukushima is much greater than uh, probably dur- during the bomb test. And in the, in the Atlantic, the fishing catch declined 50% in five years. And as soon as the bomb test stopped, it over-recovered and, and it was uh, twice as much as their peak fishing catch before the bomb testing uh, within just uh, three or four years. So the adult fish that were the breeders were not too damaged. And as soon as you turn the radiation off, the uh, normal reproduction not only happens, but the fish overproduce, which is a mechanism in nature that that exposed populations or damaged populations overproduce in order order for their their uh, population to recover. So uh, if we turn all this stuff off right now or in a very short time or gradually, uh, populations will recover, but there is also going to be a lot of genetic damage. Many people that have followed this show and have paid attention and learned everything that they can about not only Fukushima, but the the history of the nuke industry, the lies, the cover-up, and how incredibly damaging nuclear radiation is to humans, I think have realized that we really have nothing to lose by going public with this information that we need to try to recruit everybody we possibly can to pay attention to this because the type of illness and sickness and cancers that come from this are so much more aggressive. And, you know, as a, as a child, it's difficult enough to be alive today and have a quality of life with all the stress of school and um, employment and things like that. But if you're sick on top of it, you have no quality of life. Well, I just like to compare and predict the consequences of Fukushima on the Japanese population to the consequences of Fukushima on the U.S. population. First of all, the Japanese have probably the highest food standards in the world, and they have an extremely nutritious diet. They rely very heavily on the ocean for their food. They eat seaweed uh, fish, uh, crustaceans, all kinds of sea life that um, we wouldn't even think of eating here. And they also have a wonderful um, diet of vegetables, fruit, uh, that is not processed like our food is. So uh, what, what started happening is Japan, at the time Admiral Perry went to Japan, Japan was uh, completely isolationist, and they needed nothing from any other country. They didn't trade very much with other countries. They produced everything at home, and they had a very healthy population. We also had a very healthy population in the United States until World War II. And following World War II, 
um, the mainly through the influence of the Rockefellers and the bankers, J.P. Morgan and so forth, um, our diet and our, our food started being more, more and more processed. Now, in Japan, because they're so aware of food quality and, and everything, um, and because their customs is so has been so vigilant about uh, monitoring all food quality of food imported into Japan, the Japanese have had a lower uh, radiation exposure, despite Hiroshima and Nagasaki, than the American public. So they have a baseline of better health when Fukushima happened than we have in the United States. So we're going to be very, very severely impacted because after World War II, um, the U.S. government turned the entire country into a nuclear bomb factory, and that was to produce a nuclear weapons program. Then they wanted to test the nuclear weapons, so they tested them on Bikini Atoll and in the Marshall Islands and nuked all of those poor indigenous population. I mean, they bombed paradise. That was the end of paradise. They deliberately used the Pacific Islanders as guinea pigs. And um, if you read the notes of, of some of the, um, the scientists involved who were responsible for health effects and everything, they just said, oh, well, the Pacific Islanders are not really like us, you know, advanced human beings they're more like the mice but they're kind of like human beings too but this is the whole racist thing that comes in now uh which the eugenics that has been around for a long time it came from england all this crap comes from england and the um the after the bomb testing program they introduced nuclear power plants in the U.S. We have 110 nuclear power plants. It's more than any other country in the world. Japan was saddled with or, or coerced. It was uh, racketeering and extortion to get them to put nuclear power in Japan. How can you have 55 nuclear power plants in a country the size of California? And with what's now, going on there tectonically, too, where the fa four faults meet, they're all moving. The plates all move in different directions. That's right. It's the most dangerous place in the world to build nuclear power. And then when, uh, it, by the 1970s, after many lawsuits and American citizens fighting every way they could, the nuclear power industry, they weren't able to stop nuclear power. They couldn't turn off the ones that were operating but they were able to cancel all the contracts in the 70s for new nuclear power plants. And they wanted to put like 25 or 30 new plants in California. They wanted to put one in Silicon Valley. It's so crazy. So the U.S. ended up with nuclear power, 110 plants. And I collected with Dr. Sternglass and a few other scientists, including Dr. Jeanette Sherman, who was the editor for uh, Dr. Yablokov on the Chernobyl book, we collected over 6,000 baby teeth in the United States, and I went to Japan and made the first collection there. And some of us went to, some of the other scientists collected them in England, and we discovered that the strontium-90 in baby teeth uh, which was one of the reasons that the scientists were able to convince the president and American citizens to stop bomb testing in the U.S. The levels now, and the, when we collected them after 1990, the levels in baby teeth were higher in the United States and Japan and England than during nuclear bomb tests. That's from nuclear power plants. I think we yeah. need a new baby tooth study. We need a new baby teeth study. And also, the highest rates of breast cancer were uh, in the United States. We crunched all those CDC numbers uh, by county. The highest rates of breast cancer, two-thirds of all breast cancer rates, uh, I'm sorry, two-thirds of all breast cancer cases in the U.S. 
in the 1980s were in the counties within 100 miles of nuclear power plants. So that's where the baby teeth have the highest strontium-90 also. So after 1,300, 1,300 nuclear bomb tests in Nevada at the Nevada test site, then they put 110 nuclear power plants in the U.S. And if you look at a power plant map in the U.S., They're along the East Coast. They're obviously nuking the East Coast population, the densest ones. Uh, They wanted to put a nuclear power plant in Harlem in New York City, uh, which is where a black community lives. So here the the racism comes in again. And there are nuclear power plants all over the Southwest that are upwind from the Native American populations and also around the Great Lakes and in Canada, upwind from especially the Mohawk Native Canadian populations. So here we have very, very, very obvious targeted populations that are minorities, Native American and blacks in the U.S. and the poor. It's very, very obvious that this is eugenics for the purpose of eugenics that I want to recommend a book by Edwin Black called The War Against the Weak, Eugenics and America's Campaign to Create a Master Race. That is the beginning of the nuclear nightmare. Eugenics was brought from England uh, by uh, a Rockefeller mother, in the 20s, they funded eugenics in, the, uh, in Germany by the Nazis, and uh, they actually supported Nazi scientists. The Rockefellers funded their research on eugenics in the 30s and 40s, and the eugenics just goes right on because now they're using nuclear materials, nuclear pollution, to target populations all over the world and food supplies. Like milk in inner city stores? Absolutely. And what I discovered, I found this New York Times article. um, God, it was pages. It was a very, very long article, uh, three or four pages in the New York Times a few years ago on diabetes. And they had a global map of diabetes. Well, the global map of diabetes death uh, showed that they were in the same latitude in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere as the bomb tests by Russia, the U.S., England, France, and uh, China. I just said, well, my God, most the nuclear bombs are mostly depleted uranium, thousands of pounds of depleted uranium packed as a reflector or a mirror around the tiny plutonium core that's about the size of an orange, which weighs less than 20 pounds. And so I said, well, then uranium has to be uh, the main polluter from uh, the nuclear bomb test era, and the diabetes is in the same latitudes as the, uh, the nuclear bomb test. So uranium has to be ca- the main cause of diabetes Uh, since World War II. Now, Ernest Sternglass calculated the decline in fishing catch in the Pacific, and then he correlated it with the total kilotonnage or the kiloton equivalent of nuclear testing in the Nevada test site each year. And he was able to calculate the exact number of becquerels of radiation that produced uh, a decline in the fishing catch. And it always correlated perfectly. Also, the decline in the SAT scores in U.S. children exactly correlated with the total kilotonnage each year of nuclear bomb testing in Nevada. So there you have it, the, uh, the brain damage the damage to the biosphere, the fishing catch in in the Atlantic and the Pacific, and 
it's always a much more severe effect on the youngest members of our population, whether they're animals or, or, or people.